What's up, fam? Welcome back to the Well That's Good podcast. Happy Wednesday, everybody. You might be listening to this podcast after you just saw I had a baby. We are pre-recording this podcast, and um, we have to pre-record this one because me and who my guest is are both due within a week of each other, and that is why I wanted to have her on before I take off for the summer because we are in the same season of life. But this girl is amazing, y'all. She is so cool. If you do not know who Mia Fields Donovan is, Mia Fields is an absolutely incredible songwriter, worship leader. If if you haven't heard her name, I know you've heard her songs. She has written songs like Tremble, Chain Breaker, Nothing Else, Yes I Will, Beautiful Story, Age to Age, Peace Be Still, and The Dove. So she has been a part of writing songs that you probably have sang in your car or worshiped to in a church service. She's written so many more than that. Those are just to name a couple of the songs that she's written. She has a heart of gold, and she has faith that can truly move a mountain. I can't wait for you to hear about her story. We're going to talk about um, her journey for believing what God was going to do through her. We're going to talk about her journey of waiting on her husband and praying towards that, and also waiting and praying on a baby, one of the natural seemed like impossible that she was going to have a baby. And so I can't wait for you to hear the story. She's amazing. And without further ado, I'm so excited to have Mia on the podcast today. All righty. We'll just jump right in. Um, Mia, I am so excited to have you on this podcast. I was just kind of telling you before you jumped on that I was thinking who's going to be like the last podcast I do before maternity leave. And I got to thinking about us DMing because we're kind of in the same timeline with when we're going to have our babies. And I was like, you would be perfect. So thank you for saying yes while you're super pregnant, just like myself. We might be a little out of breath on this podcast, but we are here for it. So thanks for saying yes. It's like Proof that we're we're in the middle of our miracle season. That if is we're the out truth. That is the truth. I had one other uh, girl on who was pregnant. Uh, Bethany Hamilton was on a couple weeks ago, and I could like hear oh, it cool. in her voice. And I was like, I'm really glad that I'm not the only one on this episode that's out of breath. <laughs> so <laughs> it's great. Yes. Oh my gosh. Well, um, I'm so excited to talk to you about your story. For those who don't know Mia's story, I mean, there's so many layers to it that we're going to talk about. But I was telling you. Um, before I remember years ago getting a Dropbox file sent to me from my friend saying, you have to listen to Mia Field's story. And I was like, first of all, how do I even have this Dropbox? And little did I know this Dropbox was like going viral, literally, which was so cool. I mean, so many of my friends so had listened to this Dropbox. So you have to hear the story about her meeting her husband. So I want to talk about that. I want to talk about waiting on baby. I want to talk about song. I want to talk about all. But first, I have to ask you the question that is the question of the Will Let's Go podcast. And that is, what is the best piece of advice that you've ever been? Been given big question to start with it's a very big question to start with um I think the best piece of advice I've ever been given you know I'm a big faith person and I'm a big believer that you dig your heels in in faith and you contend for a promise so the best piece of advice I've ever been given was you can't make anyone understand what God wow. has told you um and I think like so often we want people to validate and um, align with the thing that God's told us, but it's called a faith journey Hmm. for a reason. And sometimes it just does feel foolish. It does feel like I can't make anyone understand this. And often it's because it's between you and God and for you guys to walk it out together. So I think that's probably one of the best pieces of of advice that I've ever been given because it made me stop striving to have people understand what something that yeah, they couldn't, gosh, you know? Yeah, gosh, that's so, so good. And it's so cool. I love when people share their best piece of advice because you see how it's truly impacted them. And I was re-listening to that story this morning of just you – and the process of waiting on your husband. And that piece of advice has carried through that entire story. I mean, if you didn't believe that in your heart, you probably would have never shared all of that story with the world. Oh, <laughs> so totally. I love that. That's totally. so cool. Um, so a little bit about you that I think is really cool that maybe not everyone knows is you are a triplet, right? Which is epic. I am. Yeah, I've got that's clones. so cool. So you're a triplet and you kind of talk about when you were in high school or middle school being at the bottom of the food chain, which is hard to believe because you're so cool now. You've written all these songs, you know, you're, you're crushing it. But bring us back to, you know, your younger years and what it was like and how you were believing that one day God would use you to write songs, but the evidence was not really on the horizon. No, right. Yeah, I think 
you know, it's it's tough, I think, growing up in like a Western culture because we do look at like the most likely um, and I was the mm. least likely. Like it was like, you know, at school it was the Jehovah's Witness <laughs> kid who was one of my friends, <laughs> then me and then like everybody else, you know, which is tough when like you have two sisters who look like you and sound like you but the divide is just mm. really big. You know, they were quite popular at school and quite well well liked and I just for some reason mm. wasn't. Probably because I played too well, <laughs> I don't know. Uh, but I, you know, even being like someone who didn't have a lot of friends at school and didn't and wasn't, you know, popular and wasn't very talented and kind of was average at everything, I had this thing in my heart where I would, I would go to God and I would read that scripture that says many are called but few mm. are chosen. And in my heart, I would be in agreement with that and I would say, God, I'm one of the chosen ones. I'm one of the people that you're going to use to do something special. And I would go to school and I would think nobody knows this, but God is going to use me to do something really wow. special. And I think the power of agreement even as a kid you know, sometimes I think we're waiting for people to prophesy over us or come and mm. recognize the gifting or recognize the call of God in our life. But if you don't recognize it yourself, it doesn't matter how many prophetic wow. words you get. You know, y- your agreement is so powerful and so important. And it's really coming into a partnership with God that says, hey, I'm willing to be used for whatever you want to wow. use me for. So as a kid, I had this like, you know, just real faith that God was going to use me for something special. And I would write these letters to God when I was a kid, like from when I was like 13 or 14 saying, one day I want to write songs that go all over the world for you. One day I want to tell people what you're like through songs. And the reason was, is I'd got saved in the Salvation Army when I Hmm. was five because we had grown up in like the projects and we needed the food, you know? So the Salvation Army would bring us food, but it wasn't – someone teaching me stories about God. It was actually through the songs that I came wow. to know God. So we would sing like, Jesus loves me, this I know, this little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine, you know, deep and wide. There's a fountain flowing deep and wide. And those were the things that became wow. my theology. So, you know, what a crazy story that then God would, you know, encounter me in that way and like he would meet me in that way and then he would say, okay, now I'm going to use you to help other people to encounter me in the Gosh. same way. So... Yeah, so I had this like thing as a kid that I was just convinced that God was going to use me for something special. And, you know, it takes a lot of faith to stay convinced when you don't have any of the mm. skill set. You know, I always joke that my first songs were rap songs and they were terrible. You know, so I think, I think I'm proof that God can use That's anyone. That's awesome. Were they legitimately rap songs? Oh, my gosh, yes, and they were terrible. Like, I didn't even listen to rap music when I was a kid, so I don't know why I started with rap songs of all things, but, you know, I I think I just I think I think just thought I would have a go, and I really wasn't very good at any of it. But I think, like, God is so kind about it. anything that you steward yeah. really well, he will multiply. Mm. You know, and stewarding it really well doesn't mean succeeding. Stewarding it really well means being faithful with what's in your mm. hands. You know, and I think there's a disconnect sometimes about like if I'm succeeding and I'm recognized, then that's good stewardship. And I think no good stewardship happens in the secret place, happens in the unseen. It's great. So, yeah, I just kind of stuck at it and then it started to work out. That's so good. Gosh, I love it so much. When you're telling me this story, it kind of reminds me of a little bit of The Prince's Diaries. I don't know if you have seen that movie. Oh, Okay, yes, Princess Mia. And she's like, doesn't have, you know, what looks like she's going to need to be the princess. And she, uh, opposite than you, though, doesn't have the confidence to believe that she should be the princess. And there was this moment in this movie that really spoke to me because I was more like, like the person that I couldn't, like you had all the faith in the world to believe it. I didn't have the faith to believe it. And I actually, um, someone spoke a word over me um, at Bethel of all places. I went with a friend to um, encourage her as she was doing a speaking thing. And um, this is before I was speaking or anything. And this girl kind of called me out and she said, you need to step outside of your tent like Abraham, look up at the stars and ask God for the faith to believe what he's going to do through you. And um, it was such a good word because I didn't, never knew I could ask God for the faith. Like I felt like if if anything, God, I can give you faith, you know, like you're doing everything else. Like I, my job is to give faith, but actually I can ask you for faith. So I just begin to go, ask God for faith. But going back to this movie scene moment with Princess Mia, you know, she 
she doesn't think she should be princess. She's like, this is a nightmare. And her and her friend Lily are outside playing basketball. And she's like, oh, this is just a nightmare. And her friend Lily goes, a nightmare? She goes, really? She said, wanting to rock the world but having zip power, that's a nightmare. Because she was talking about herself. She she just found out her show is only reaching 12 people, her cable show, all this stuff. And she said, you... You are a miracle. It's a miracle that you get to be a princess, that you actually have the power to affect change. That's a miracle. And I loved it. And it, I was sitting there watching it and kind of in this time where I felt God kind of calling me to do more than I uh, believed I could do in my own strength. I was going to have to depend on His power within me. And I realized like it is a miracle that the God of the universe would call me by name, that I would get to partner with Him in doing something that would... Uh, ultimately result in other people getting to know him. And so I just remember that really speaking to me, but hearing your story, it's so cool because I love how you said, you know, in the Westernized culture, people like to choose who looks the most likely, but that is not what God does. I mean, even God said to whenever he was going to anoint Samuel, like, Man looks at the outward appearance, but God looks at the heart. And here you are stewarding the gift that God put on your life before it was even really uh, seen as the gift. It was rap music. And so like, it was it not, was not good. good, but it was stewarded well. <laughs> so how did you go from rap music to writing songs that the whole church is singing? Like w- kind of bridge the gap for us. What What started that journey of actually writing songs for the church? Y'all, I know how it is. And you have a busy lifestyle. It can be really hard to stay healthy, especially when you're on the go. Um, But that is why AG1 has been so huge for our family because it just makes being healthy so much easier. You don't have to put your health on the back burner. And that's why we are an AG1 Athletic Greens family. Our world can get complicated at times, but AG1 is always so simple and easy. AG1 is just a single scoop that's packed with 75 vitamins, minerals, and whole food source ingredients. So you can replace so many different products and pills with just one serving. Christian tried it for the first time because he's all about healthy lifestyle and he loves trying products to help him meet his wellness goals. So he tried AG1 and he was hooked. He got his parents on it too. And now he even has friends of ours loving it. Uh, It's pretty awesome. Christian was immediately impressed by the taste as well as the boost AG1 gave him an energy focused stamina throughout the day and also just uh, recovery from some of his tough workouts. He also noticed improvement to his gut health, which is so important because gut health really affects our overall health health, especially our mental health. AG1 by Athletic Greens fills nutritional gaps in your diet. So even if you're busy traveling on the go, you can always make sure that you have a good immune supporting boost of energy that AG1 will give. They also have travel packs, which I have right here, which make traveling so much simpler and easier. AG1 was designed with ease in mind so that you can live a healthy and better lifestyle without having to do a lot. Here's the travel pack. Super cute. Throw in your backpack. Get where you're going and be healthy while you're doing it. Another thing that I love about Athletic Greens is their vitamin D3 plus K2 drops. I have it right here. If you're watching this, I keep my drops with me every day here at the office. I can just put it in my water or my food um, because taking vitamin D has helped me personally so much. It's helped my skin a lot. It also helps with immune system, heart, and bones. And it's just so easy. Plus, there's 600 servings in this little thing. So this will last you a long time. If you're looking for an easier way to take supplements, Athletic Greens is giving you a free one-year supply of vitamin D and five free travel packs with your first purchase. Just go to athleticgreens.com slash woe. That's athleticgreens.com slash woe and check it out today. You know, I think um, I just stuck at it. Like I think there is, you know, the Bible talks about how trials produce perseverance, perseverance produces character and character produces hope. And there's something so powerful about just – persevering you know and so many people give up before it's before Mm. it's time and I I love that like for me like I'm really not a story of having this amazing gift and then you know just being in a field and playing my guitar and eventually someone figured figured it out and (laughs) put me before a king I'm really a story of you know just little by little step by step faith by faith you know just walking Mm. it out you know and I think the kindness of God is that You know, he took me from this little town. I grew up in a really small town in Australia in northeast Victoria called Myrtleford, and it's just 3,600 people. And it's, I mean, it's not like 
an American small town where there's still a Walmart and there's still a McDonald's and all that. No, there was none of that. Um, it's like a really small town that like the closest McDonald's wow. is like an hour away. So, so that's how like remote it was. But, you know, it's I love how God is like really interested in like plucking you out of obscurity and saying, if you want to walk this out with me, I have somewhere for you to go that's Good. pretty powerful. Um, so I ended up like moving actually – to Sydney to go to the Hillsong College when I was um, 17. And I just started writing, kept, like I, I'd been writing songs before I went, but I kept writing songs mm. when I went. And I probably handed in about 70 songs before one of them even really wow. made it through. And I think that's a really good journey. You know, it's a way harder journey for the very first thing you put your hand to to work because then there's so much pressure on you to deliver when you don't actually have the skill set to do it and when you don't have the character to do yeah. it. Yeah. Um, you know, like I think it would have been a harder journey if the first thing I did was like super successful or like super well received. But instead it was just this like chipping away, you know, almost like building a like, I don't know, almost like carving out a sculpture, you know, it's where cool. it just it took a lot of time. And like people forget like, you know, I'm I'm 40 I just turned 40 in January and like I actually been doing this for like 21 years. Yeah. So it's not been a journey of like, you know, just having an overnight success. It's been a journey of just continuing to walk it out, continuing to persevere, continuing to just take every season that, as it comes. You know, there are definitely manifest seasons of God where it feels like, you know, you're hearing him very loudly and everything's working and everything feels like it's being well received. And then there's hidden seasons where it feels like, you know, it's a bit more silent. You have to dig in a little more and, you know, there's, it's maybe a bit quieter, yeah. you know, and I think that's actually really powerful to be able to do both of those seasons really that's well. That's so good. So, I, yeah. So I went from like writing at Hillsong for like 10 years to then moving to the United States, becoming an American citizen, which I love, <laughs> um, awesome. and, and just continuing to write songs here. So cool. Gosh, I love that so much because so many people do desire for – to be an overnight success or they're, you know, 22 years old, just got out of college and they're so frustrated that it hasn't happened for them yet. But I think you're so right. Um, there's actually good reason a lot of times why it hasn't happened yet and what God's doing in those hidden times, what God's doing in that, um, you know, sacred space where you are just writing 70 songs and flushing it out and getting to know God and getting to know yourself as you work with Him on the skill set and the gifting that He's given you is so beneficial. My friend and I were talking about this the other day because she's worked with me now for the past six years and she helps run like everything with LO. And she was saying, you know, Sadie, like for a long time, I wanted to like have my dream job. And I was like, why am I not getting like my dream job? And I have all these other jobs. And she said, but I realized like if I had had this job then when I wanted it, I, w I wouldn't have even lasted here because I wouldn't even know what to do. But because she had all these other jobs that strengthened her skill sets, that put tools in her toolbox, if you will, by the time she got on this team, she's brought LO to what it is today. I mean, we would not have we would not be doing half of what we're doing had she not come on our team and been able to bring this amazing just um, years of hard work and years of knowledge that she gained from these other jobs. And so those times are just, they're so important, even if they don't seem big or totally. like the dream, they're all leading towards where, where you're going. Every season is so intentional. And so it's cool totally. to hear that in your story. And Oh, I was just going to say like, you know, just as an encouragement for anyone who is 21 or 22 or 18 or 25 and you feel like it hasn't happened for you yet, let me encourage you. God will be incredibly kind to you along the way, mm. you know. My, I had my first song recorded when I was like 19 or 20 and, you know, it's like God will give you little kisses from heaven along the way to like encourage you to keep walking it out and he will be incredibly kind to you along the way. So don't think it's going to be one of those things where you're hidden for like 20 years and then it'll all just happen at once. It's it's glory to glory and strength to strength. That's the whole Great. story. So so I just I don't want anyone to be discouraged that like you're just going to be in a, in a holding pattern for like 20 years. I will say this, like I remember um, flying home to Australia once um, a couple of years ago and, you know, going to Australia, is, it's an incredibly long flight and you have to fly to LA and then you have to wait around and then it's like 11 o'clock at night. So it's, you know, by the time you're on that plane, you're ready to just take off and get home. 
um, and take that 14 hour flight. But I remember getting on the plane one time and, you know, it had been such a long travel day and it's 1130 at night. And then they say like, we can't take off because the wind is going in the wrong direction. So we have a bad headwind. Mm. And I remember sitting in that plane being so frustrated, Mm. being like, no, just take off. And we sat on the runway for an hour and a half in without taking off. And then all of a sudden the wind changed and and the plane took off. We actually ended up getting to Australia in a quicker amount of time than what we would have gotten even if there was no headwind. So instead of it taking 14 hours, it only took 12 hours and 20 minutes or something like that. So we not only made up the time, but we got there quicker. And sometimes God is saying, I don't want you to get ahead of me. I don't want you to get ahead of the Holy Spirit, but wait for the wind to change because I'm going to actually accelerate the way you get there if you'll just wait on me. The holding pattern is not to delay you. It's actually to get you there quicker. It's great. That is so good. I'm so glad you said that. That's so good. And I, I think about whenever I started, even I started, uh, doing live events for Ella whenever I was like um, 18, I think. And it was really funny because this past year we got to host our first conference and it was like very exciting. So, you know, we're posting it, we're talking about it and people are like, oh, this is so cool that you're starting this and all this stuff. Well, in the time that, you know, the conference was coming up, I got this throwback on my phone. You know how it'll be like five years ago from today or whatever. And it said seven years ago from today. And it seven years ago from today was my first live event that we ever put on. And it was so funny because I was like, people think this is my first event to ever do because this is the one that's working, you know, in the sense of like, this is the one that looks exciting and people are actually showing up. Seven years ago when I had the uh, first uh, live events that we were doing, it looked a little bit different. We ended up having to cancel two events that we planned for because only 40 people bought tickets in a 3,000 seat arena. So it was like not as, you know, successful. But what God was doing in that time, again, like it wasn't about the success. It was about stewarding what God was doing. And now seven years later, I'm able to to step into these moments. And I've seen God be God for all seven years. I've had exciting moments within those Absolutely. times. Uh, those those dates and those tours that we did, even though it didn't look the same as it does today, they were still used by God. And I'm so grateful for that. So you're so right. It's not like you're going to wait, you know, 20 years, seven years, eight, however long. And then all of a sudden it's like, boom, it's like, no, there's a process to the whole thing. And it's fun to ride. It's fun to ride the ride with God. It's fun to do those things. It's fun to look back and be like, okay, that was not successful, but man, did we learn so much, man, what God did in that time was awesome. So I'm really glad you said that. Um, One thing I've heard you say before when you were talking about your time at Hillsong and then leaving to come to America is that people were saying like, you, you know, you're at the top of the game. Why would you do anything else? Like this is the biggest it's ever going to be. And I think that sometimes we do have to fight that lie of believing that I've already done the biggest thing that I'm ever going to do in my life. Um, And especially like for people out there listening, I mean, some people are 22 and still waiting on um, or working towards what God's ultimately going to do in a big way. But some people, especially in a social media culture, it's like you've hit your success moment. You've had the overnight success. You've had your viral moment. And it can be really easy to get wrapped up in the identity of what was and not keep going. And so for you, um, when people were saying stuff like that, what what did you tell yourself in that time? What did you believe um, God was going to do or what was to come instead of getting wrapped up in what was? Friends, if you know me, you know I'm all about some good snacks. And right now I am really into dried fruit, especially mangoes. And I love trying new brands. I was so excited when a box from nuts.com showed up at my house and their dried mangoes, I am not kidding, are seriously the best I have ever had. They are better than any other brand. And they are so fast. Like I ran out of my pack because I ate it pretty fast. And I overnighted those things. They were here the next day. Uh, If you don't know what they're all about, nuts.com is your one-stop shop for freshly roasted nuts, dried fruit, sweets, pantry staples, like specialty flowers, and more. Their wide selection means there is something for everyone, and they have a seriously huge selection of snacks. They've got sweet and savory, plus gluten-free, organic, and diet-friendly snacks. They even have everyday cooking essentials like herbs and sauces. Nuts.com has pretty much got you covered on all the things. I can't wait to check out some of the other stuff that they have at Nuts.com because all of it is so good. It's so cool that I can buy their products individually to try them out, or 
store when I find something I really love, I can sign up for auto delivery so I never run out of my favorite things like my dried mangoes, for example. I personally love dried fruits. This was great for me. But like I mentioned, there's all kinds of stuff. I mean, we are big nut and chocolate fans and they have all of those different things on their website too. I was looking just the other day and was like, wow, here's some of me and Christian's favorite things. And so, so excited to just get to dive in more to all the things that they have. Nuts.com is serious about quality too. They pop their corn and roast their nuts the same day they're shipped. So they're super fresh when you get it at your house, um, which is so awesome. And that makes a big difference. It sounds old fashioned to do it that way, but they've been doing it the old fashioned way since 1929. And it makes a big difference. If you're a business owner like me, nuts.com even will sell directly to you, which you got to love that kind of support. Um, All this talk about snacks is definitely making me hungry. I'm gonna have to go get my mangoes. But right now, nuts.com is offering new customers a free gift with purchase and free shipping on orders of $29 or more at nuts.com slash woe. So go check out all the delicious options at nuts.com slash woe. You'll receive a free gift and free shipping when you spend more than $29. Again, that's nuts.com slash woe to go check it out. Well, you know, I think, I think there's two things. Um, number one, your obedience to God is, is so much more important than your people pleasing with mm. man. You know, and it does go back to that thing of you can't make anyone understand what God has told you, which doesn't mean you go and burn all your bridges. It means like it's not what you do, it's how you do it, you know. And I still like, you know, even in a transition period, I think sometimes people really wrestle with like, well, God's told me this, so I'm just going to like burn the ships and off I go. And I think sometimes you just have to like wait and go, okay, what's your time in God and how do you want me to walk this Mm. out? So, you know, for me, it was really important how I walked it out, not just what I did. Um, but I had to go back to, you know, God has said this and, and I would much rather be in a partnership with him than in a partnership with any of the words that are being spoken over good. me. Is it, is it scary to be like, I'm leaving this familiar, comfortable thing where if I stayed, it would be easy. Yes, that's incredibly, incredibly hard and incredibly uncomfortable. But, you know, one of the ways we grow our faith and one of the ways we, we develop a track record with God is by giving him our yes and actually being prepared to walk it out no matter what it mm. looks like. And so for me, I was like, I kind of, I think I just got into a place where I just said, you know, whatever this looks like, I'm prepared to do it. And I, and I kind of had like this thing of like, I'm going to go give it my best shot. And at the end of the day, even if it fails in the eyes of everybody else, I did what I thought God was telling me to do in faith. And the Bible says that without faith, it's impossible to please God. So my goal is to please God more than it is to please anybody else, you know, more than it is to even succeed. I just want to please God. And it's amazing how he will meet you in that, you know, and he will meet you in, in, in you stepping out in faith. So I remember when I got to America, sitting in this empty apartment with a mattress on the floor. Um, when I was like 27 or 26 or 27. And I remember um, having this moment where I I was watching ch- our church service online and I just started crying my heart out being like, what have I done? And I think everybody has those yep. moments when, you know, when you step out in faith and it doesn't, and you feel like you're sitting in the void and you feel like you're sitting in the like the unknown and like the, this isn't how I thought it would look. And I think you have a choice in those moments to either look back and and say like what have I done like I regret it all and I enter long and grieve for the old season or you have a choice to look back and say look what the Lord did and so imagine what he's going that's to do that's great and I think you partner with God in that ingratitude so I ended up driving down to FedEx and printing off all these photos of the last 10 years and I put them on my walls of my apartment and every time I would walk past those walls, I would have a reason to be grateful. And I would put my hands out and I would say, God, thank you so much that this is what you did in the last 10 years. And thank you that in the next 10, you're going to run circles around Wow. It. And honestly, in five years, God ran circles around Come it. Come on. And he doesn't, he doesn't even cut off the last 10 years. It all ends up going together and God brings it all full circle. You know, I have as strong, a friend, as strong friendships as I did 
back then and like even all the people that like I I loved in Sydney now they're in Nashville all the time so how good is that awesome that's so good gosh I love that so much and that leads perfectly into the story of you praying and believing for a husband because it is a story of faith and partnering with God and a story of collecting a lot of evidence and so I Mm -hmm. cannot wait for you to share a little bit about this story so like I mentioned this story years ago kind of went viral through a Dropbox link and then now it is up on the podcast podcast from where you ended up speaking at the church. But for those who haven't heard your story, share a little bit about the process of praying for your husband. Well, okay. So, (laughs) you know, I think I'd seen God move in every single area of my life. Like even like, you know, in like the things that were in my heart to do in finance, in like my health, in, in friendships, in even moving overseas, I'd seen God move over and over and over again. But there was this one area where I had like believed God for this God orchestrated thing since I was like 16, Mm. you know? Um, And, you know, everyone had told me like, well, you know, you just pick anyone and God will bless it. And, you know, I love that even God will speak into that for you. And God has a different story for everybody, you know? So I think for me, like I just had this thing where I really wanted God to partner with me on it. And I really wanted to just know that I know that I know that it's Mm -hmm. him, you know? But my experience had been like incredible disappointment. And, you know, I've said this over and over again, but if your filter is disappointment, then even if God wants to do something for you, you won't be able to see it, you know, Mm -hmm. and you won't even give him the credit for it even if he does do Mm -hmm. it. So for me, I had like kind of believed God, but the very first thing that he wanted to do was heal me of this deep disappointment Mm -hmm. so that I could actually have eyes to see what he wanted to do. So kind of... He kind of started doing a work in me about that. And then I remember having this moment where I'd said to him, God, I'm going to keep trusting you, but I want to know what you're doing. And the crazy thing was is that instead of finishing off like, you know, seasons where I would be disappointed, like, oh, God didn't come through, I started finishing off seasons where I was like, well, it hasn't happened yet, but like fully expected. And I had this moment in church where I, I'd said to God, I want to know what you're doing. And I had this actual vision of a um, furniture warehouse. And in the furniture warehouse, God was standing beside me. And I looked out and there was all these one-off pieces of furniture. And God said to me, you can pick anything you want. Which, you know, that is such a, that's such a like beautiful thing about God is he's not putting limitations yeah. on us. And he's not saying like, well, you're this old or, you know, you have like this social standing or you have like whatever or, you know, you know, I think society can put like a lot of boxes around you. And, you know, I've talked to a lot of women who are like, you know, older and like, you know, they've had friends make them believe these are your options. And I'm like, God just doesn't, God just isn't out of it's options. Good. So God's like, you go for it and you dream yep. big. So he'd said, you can pick anything you want. And I remember in this vision, walking around this furniture warehouse, looking at these amazing one-off pieces of furniture where nothing was the same, but still feeling like nothing here is for me. Mm and not having a peace about it. And to be honest, that's how I'd felt about mm. dating. And in the vision, I ended up going back to God and saying, I don't want to do this unless you do it mm. with me. I don't want to choose unless you help me choose. And, you know, he he's so tender. He like drew me into this embrace and he said, you know, Mia, everything here is good. I'm actually the one that created all of it. And there are pieces here that are better for you than other pieces. But if you really want me to pick with you, I will custom make it for so you. So good. And he said, but but that means you'll be empty handed for a little bit longer. Are you willing to do that? And I said, yes. And then the vision was over. And, you know, I think one of the most powerful things you can do in a season where you're believing for something is to go to God and ask him for a promise, because then you will have something to hold on to and you will have something to contend for. And then it doesn't matter what else you're facing or what the horizon looks like. You will always be able to go back to this moment of like a but God moment and you'll be able to look for evidence of what he's doing instead of what he's not doing. Great. Um, and I think we do have like a, a bit of a wrestle with that where like, you know, where we start to compare our season to other people's season, mm. you know, I, I never want to be someone who, you know, in every season, if all my friends are getting married, rest assured, I'm going to be on the front row cheering my face off, buying you the best gift because I'm not going to be someone who looks at somebody else's breakthrough or the, the thing that I'm believing for somebody else gets and take that as like, oh, God's ripping me off. Yeah. Like that's such a, it's such a destructive mentality. 
um, it's actually, you know, the word testimony, it means do it again. You know, yeah. it's permission for you to, be, like seeing people's testimonies, hearing people's testimonies, that is permission for you to say, God, look what you can do for them. So like I'm asking you to like come and do it in my life That's as well. Cool. So I kind of went on this journey with God for about two or three years where, you know, people would say to me like, you know, when people try and set you up, but like their <laughs> their options for you are not as good as God's options. <laughs> yep. Um yeah, where you're like, no, like God doesn't lowball me and so I'm not going to lowball myself. Um, so I went on this journey with God where I would literally look for evidence. Like, you know, instead of instead of like just waiting around, I got like, you know, Bill Johnson has this thing that he says about waiting where he says it's not, you know, we think of waiting as so passive, but it's actually incredibly active. Good. You know, it, resting in God is like, partnering with God and relaxing into what God's doing, but waiting, he says it's like twirling in the dance. Oh, it's cool. And and it, it means that you have to lock eyes with your dance partner and and just really focus and like go where they're going, yes. which I think that's such a beautiful, beautiful picture. Um, so I begin to look for evidence of what God was doing in a, in a pretty practical way. And I don't think it's a formula for everyone. I think you the, uh, the whole point of a testimony is that you would dare to have your own story with God. Um, but I mean, I, I bought, I mean, I was in Israel and I bought a wedding ring for a guy, which sounds like, you know, it can sound incredibly cringy, but like, I'm like, well, you know, be it unto you according to your faith, yes. you know? So I, uh, you know, I did things like that. I did things like, I remember Chris Kane was preaching at church one night and she talked about the walls of Jericho and she said, you know, what do you do when you, when you've got your promise, but you hit a mm. wall and she goes, you have to march around the mm -hmm. wall. And I was like, okay. So, you know, God had spoken to me about like, I'm custom making you something. And then he had spoken and said, it's in the mail. So I felt like this thing was on the way, but like, I hadn't seen it. And so I remember after that message going home and walking around my mail building seven times at midnight, like awesome, and, which sounds craziness, but I'm like sometimes doing something in the natural that like exercises your faith is so good because I can look back on those moments and I can say, you know, like I I was so convinced that I did something in the natural that felt foolish, which is the whole like the whole substance of faith is that it does look yeah. foolish. But I remember walking around that building seven times, and you know, I'd love to tell you that an angel came down from heaven and like had a thus saith the Lord <laughs> moment, but that's just not what happened. But it's funny because I, I did it and I just said, God, thank you that it's on its way and thank you that I can like march around this building seven times and it might feel insignificant, but in the spirit it's so significant. And the funny thing was the next morning I got two messages. One was from Jen Johnson and one was from Brooke Fraser and they were both uh, messages saying, hey, like here's these dr dreams that we've had like about you getting married, wow. which is crazy, <laughs> you know. So I think like it comes back to that thing I was saying before of like God will give you little God weeks yeah. along the way to get you to your destination, you know, the way that he turns up like in the desert before you get to the promise and he provides in the desert so that you will have something to sustain yep. you all the way to like the promised mm -hmm. land. Um, so long story short, you know, I, I kind of just kept walking it out and people would say, you know, we've got this thing or like, you should come to this, so you should do this. And I would say, like, no, God's custom making me a husband. I love it. <laughs> which, which sounds crazy, but then, you know, you can have the seed of something and people won't get it, but when you have the fruit, they'll go, aha. Come aha. on. And it's so powerful to to declare things in faith before they've happened and to, like, speak it out before it's happened because – once it's clear for you and clear for everybody, there's there's something that's not as powerful about saying like God is going to do this and then watching people going like, wow, look, God actually did this for this person. Wow. You know, yeah. So. That is so good. Gosh, the story is so amazing. Some of you guys know that we're building a new house right now and we're so excited about it. One thing that we just picked out was our new bed, but with the bed, we had to have a mattress and who doesn't love having something customized? My friends at Helix Sleep know exactly how that feels and they want you to feel like you have a customized best sleep of your life every single night. Helix Sleep is a premium mattress brand that tailors mattresses to different types of sleepers and their preferences. They've got 14 unique models to fit whatever your needs are. They've got luxury, they've got kids models, 
models and even big and tall models. There are some tall people out there in my family for sure who definitely appreciate that little extra leg room. Helix will help you find the perfect mattress for you with their two minute sleep quiz. Just answer a few questions about your sleep habits and they'll tell you exactly which model works best for you. We were matched with a Helix Midnight mattress, which is not too soft and not too firm and has a cooling effect that Christian and I both love. And I'm a side sleeper and let me tell you, it is amazing to wake up without aches and pains from tossing and turning during the night because they made a mattress perfect for us. Why would you sleep on a mattress made for anyone else? Helix will pick out one just for you and your personalized mattress is shipped to your door, which might be the best part, totally free. The setup is quick and easy. All you have to do is literally take it out of the box. It is literally that simple. Helix knows there's no better way to try out a new mattress than by sleeping on it. So they're also gonna give you 100 nights to make sure that you love it. Plus, all Helix mattresses are American made and come with a 10 to 15 year warranty based on the model that you choose. Some of them have extra responsive foam layers to cradle your body. Some have enhanced cooling features to keep you uh, from waking up overheated. There's so many extras that make them just so amazing. But all Helix Sleep models have a hybrid design for the perfect combo of comfort and support. So friends, you don't just have to take my word for it though. Helix has been named number one mattress by Wired Magazine and others. It is also recommended by leading chiropractors and doctors and it got over 12,000 five-star reviews. So they have some pretty legit credit to their name. So go get the best sleep of your life. Try out Helix right now. You'll thank me later. Helix is offering up to 20% off all mattress orders and two free pillows for our listeners. It's a pretty big deal. So go to helixsleep.com slash Sadie. Go check it out today. This is their best offer yet and it's not going to last long. With Helix, better sleep can start now. Go to helixsleep.com slash Sadie. I've heard this story twice and hearing it again, it makes me just as excited. And like knowing what you did next, it's like, I wish this was kind of like a movie so you could see it all happening. of Just walking around the mailbox and doing all these things that might have seemed crazy, but yet God was working the whole time. And it's it's very obvious now. I'm sure it didn't feel as obvious sometimes in those moments. Like you said, an angel didn't appear. But over time, getting to see what God was doing and the details of that is so cool. And I love what you said about a dance and locking eyes with the dance partner because um, when I was 17, this is just a crazy part of my story, but I was on Dancing with the Star. And I had no dance experience before that. And so I did not know how to dance. And it seemed really crazy to start in front of like 20 million people every week. But that was just a part of my story. And so I just remember being so terrified. But my dance partner was amazing. I mean, he is incredible. He's danced his whole life. And what he began to teach me is like, hey, if you will just let me lead, like you're naturally going to follow because I am like, I'm, I'm controlling this thing when I hold your hands. And so we would practice literally as he would hold my hands. If he did this, I mean, it would be the slightest movement, but that's where my body would go. And this is where my body would go. And it was just like the coolest thing. And as we would dance together, I just began to be so confident, not in my dance ability, but in my dance partner's ability to lead Come me. On. And I learned so much about just walking things out with God through us dancing together. And what's really cool is this one dance in particular, it was like um, the Foxtrot and he had this beautiful choreography planned for us. And it was like, um, just, it was different than anybody had ever seen before. We added another girl in the mix too. And it was just this beautiful dance. Well, he was leading me the whole time. Everything was going great. And at the very end, I missed a step. And me missing the step caused me to get a little bit off. And we weren't together at this moment. It was like a side-by-side -side moment. So I missed this step. But literally, as soon as I grabbed his hand, we kind of just made the rest of this up. He pulled me in and I twirled and spun and he dipped me. And it was the first night. Come it was on. the first night of the whole show that I got all tens and it was the night I messed up and it was like really cool lesson and knowing that like the moment I stepped away from my dance partner I got a little bit shaky ground but the minute he grabbed my hand we got back in step and I think about that with wow. God you know sometimes we think 
we're going to mess up his plan, you know? And I really just believe that if you stay near to him, if your if your desire is to glorify him, to be in relationship with him, like you're not going to mess it up. Like he's leading it, you know? Just follow those leads, follow those tugs, and you make this beautiful story together. And one thing I love about your story is not only did you gather all this evidence, um, but you like literally gathered it. Like, don't you have like a box of like... I do. Okay. I should have got the box out. I, I should have got the box. We need the box. But what I love about that is, you know, just like we learned from the Israelites, like they forgot so quickly, right? And it's so easy for us to forget. But I love that you didn't even like allow yourself to forget because you you literally held on to it. So tell me a little bit about just gathering evidence for God, because I think for some people listening, what I want you to help talk to people about is, you know, For the person who was like me, who grew up in a really traditional church until I was 17 years old, I did not know. Like, if you would have told me the story, I'd be like, what? Like, people talk to God like that? Like, how do you how do you even like do that? What does that even look like? And I, I, I didn't know. And then I remember moving to Nashville and going to the belonging and being like, this is this is crazy. Like, I loved it. Like, it was like totally just um, exploding the boxes that I put around God. I was like, God, you're this big. And then I started talking to God and I started realizing that God speaks to us like this. And I started realizing that God actually is so much bigger than I thought he was and wants to do a relationship with you. But for 17 years, I did not know what in the world that looks like. And for some people, they're, you know, listening to this and you're like, I would love to have a story like that. But I've never seen God do anything like that. I don't even know how to look for that. I don't know how to talk like that. How do you begin to live a life in communication with God and looking for evidence of God in the way that you do if you've just never done that before? Well, you know, I, it's that's a really good question because I think it is hard when your framework has been something completely different. You know, um, I think, you know, we can take the pressure off ourselves. I think so often we're like, well, I have to like find God in this new way. And I'm like, well, what if God is waiting to find you? So I think the first thing is just waiting, like just wanting to be super willing. And, you know, I talked about like the power of your agreement a little bit earlier. I think being, being willing to come out of agreement with like, like, fundamental things that you're like, no, this is the only way God speaks. You know, God is the only way God speaks is like, if I read Mm -hmm. my Bible, yes, he absolutely does. But he also wants to speak to you like, just like a, like, like he's your best friend sitting here. Like he's like me talking to you, Sadie, you know, like, and, and he'll never contradict his word, but the fact that he wants to have real present relationship today and like that the Holy Spirit wants to speak to you and guide you and take you by the hand and lead you into all truth. I think that's such a powerful thing. So I think coming at being willing to let go of like your framework a little bit is, is pretty powerful. And like, you know, even for me, I grew up, you know, you know, my mom was into like really new age stuff and like did tarot card readings and all that sort of stuff. So I think, you know, the spirit realm and everything was something that was never hard for me to believe in. But, you know, it was powerful for me to come to America and go to like really traditional churches and still hear from God in a different context yeah. to what I was yeah. used to. So it kind of works the other way around as well. But, you know, I think letting go of like some of your framework and saying, God, I, like, I don't know what it's going to look like, but I, but I just, I want to hear from you and I want to walk with you and I want to talk with you and you have room mm-hmm. here, you know, at making room. Um, the other thing I think is like being aware that like God is so kind, you know, I know my friends really well and they know me really well and I know how to speak their language. And, you know, God is the, the truest, kindest, best friend you'll ever have. And he knows how to speak your language, you know. So for some people it is like, Maybe, you know, maybe you're a words of affirmation person. It's amazing how God will speak to you through words of affirmation. For some people, it's an act of service thing. It's amazing how God will meet you in like, in like an act of, act of service, like where he will speak to you and reveal something to you. Um, you know, I think about, you know, Saul uh, on the road to Damascus, uh, like, the fact that God can knock him off a horse, blind him, and be like, I'm going to encounter you whether you like yeah. it or not. You know, there is something really powerful about knowing that, like, it's not all on yeah. you, you know? Good. Um, so I think just being willing. And then the other part I think is just understand that sometimes it'll feel a bit foolish. Yeah. 
And that's a really good thing for you to get into a place where you're comfortable with the foolish. Yeah. Because um, God will use the foolish things of the world to confound the wise. So, you know, for me, one thing that helped me is I started writing letters to God and and God met me there. And so for good. you, maybe it's you just getting out of your comfort zone and you doing something that is uncomfortable for you. Like, so maybe... Maybe it's getting out in nature and going for walks with God and saying like, you know, before you go on your walk, saying, Holy Spirit, would you come on a walk yeah. with me? You know, maybe it's like you start to like, I don't know, yeah, write letters to I God. Or maybe you start to journal, you know, when you say, God, I'm, I'm asking you to meet me in this. Yeah. And it's amazing how like if you called a friend and said, hey, would you meet me to go for a walk? You know, nine times out of ten they would. Yeah. You know, how much more faithful is God that he would show up when, when you ask him to show up? Um, so yeah, so I think just that's such good advice. Treat him like a friend. <laughs> I love that. That's such good advice, and I love how you said that God's in all of it. It's in both. Like, is He in reading your Bible and speaking? Absolutely. Is He in the moments that? Um, I mean, there's one part of your story that you shared in that podcast where uh, one of your friends had the dream about your wedding being teal, and you're like, I don't like teal, yes. but you go to Hobby Lobby or wherever it was or Home Depot and you bought all the teal swatches. And I was like, I love yes. that. But like, yes, God's in that too. Like, He's speaking in all of these different things. And I feel yeah. like I remember when I first started coming to the belonging, and I was just in this time of really realizing that God is a lot bigger than I thought He was. And it was when Natalie Grant had also like just put out the song um is it king of the world is that um yeah. yeah and it was like I tried to put you in the box that I designed and I just remember thinking like this is so my life and then he's like when did I forget that you've always been the king of the world and um when I look back at my life and and you know even the years of being in a really traditional church like the things I learned about the word of God the bible just reading the hymns just singing hymns and experiencing him and all these things like I still see God in every single one of those things because that is also like where God is, is where his heart is. His word is how he speaks to us. But at the same time, as I open my heart to what the Holy Spirit could do, because I believe God is three in one. There's a trinity to this, like the the characteristics of the Holy Spirit, who is like a comforter and a friend and a voice and guiding me. And then thinking about Jesus and like who he is in my life and all of a sudden was like, okay, it's not just one, it's three in one. And whenever I experience you in your fullness, like then you're all of a sudden in every part of my life. And, um, you know, I think there are times in my life where I focused um, a little bit too much on one than all. And whenever it got into harmony of all three, it's like, wow, God, you're so big. You're so good. You're a father and you're a friend and you are the lion and you're the lamb and you're this and you're that. And you're all the things and there's just no limit to who you are. Then like life gets so exciting to be lived with God. And so I think that's a great, uh, that was a great piece of advice, even on the practical side of start doing something that feels foolish. I mean, I remember my friend, one of my best friends, when she was walking through this with the Lord, she started asking God to go on dates with her because uh, she was single and she yeah. was like, we're just going to go get to know each other. And she would literally on, sit man. down for dinner and she would get her a glass. She'd get God a glass of water and she would put the meal here and she put a little for him. And she was like, I just want to believe Amazing. in such a way. And, and if it's putting a water glass there and a little bit of food just for me in the natural to get on board with that he is here in the spiritual, then this is what we're going to do. And it sounds crazy and it might feel crazy, but man, like when I look at her life, like you said, the evidence is in the fruit of her life that God meets her where she's at. And like, there is nothing about her that seems crazy or foolish to me. If anything, she's one of the wisest people I know. And so I just, I love that you shared that. I think that's so good. Um, one thing I definitely want to talk to you about is just this season of you're about to have a baby and by the time yes. people listen to this we will have both had our our babies lord willing our two girls yes. and um i yes. just am so excited for you and your story that you shared on instagram from even your caption was just so uh powerful and i, I saw so many of my friends who I know have walked through seasons of waiting for babies being very encouraged by things that you share because not only were you waiting on a baby, you walked through a lot of um, disappointing things leading up to that, that 
would tell you in the natural that this might not happen for you, um, which a lot of people are currently walking through or have walked through. Um, Tell us a little bit about the journey to getting where you're at and even how what you see, because to me, I think it's pretty obvious that what you walk through with your husband, what you walk through with songwriting, I feel like it might have strengthened you for what you walk through with uh, your baby. And so I'd just love to hear this story. Oh, absolutely. Um, it's funny because I think, you know, that, you know, I, I think about the story in the Bible where Jesus feeds the 5,000 and he, you know, he, the, the disciples come to him, they're like, what are we going to do? We've got no food for all these people. And, and, you know, the Bible says that Jesus already knew what he was going to do. Like he already had it figured out, but he, but he asks them and puts the question back on them to build their faith and grow their faith. And I think that is such a beautiful picture of the way that God does life with us. There's sometimes we go, we go to God and we say, God, what are you going to do? And God says, well, what are you going to do? Good. And, and the whole point was not to just feed 5,000 in that moment, but the whole point was to sustain them for their whole life so that they would learn how to be convinced about God and learn how to, how to go to heaven and go to Jesus for like the answer and go to Jesus for the provision, go to Jesus for like the breakthrough instead of just the moment, you know, but to develop this track record. So I feel like for me, like I've constantly been developing this track record with God of like, this is a no from from in the natural, but like, but I'm going to believe you for a yes. And uh, right at the very outset, you know, I'd said like it's so important in every season to get a promise from God. And sometimes, you know, people might say like, yeah, but like I haven't heard from God, I haven't got a promise. And I'm like, you have a whole book of them. Mm, so like, go go to the book and like find every single person who it, it was a no in the natural, and they contended, and God and God found a way, you know. But, I think that's so powerful because, again, it's that thing of testimony like, God, look, you did it here, you did it here, you did it here, so do it again for me. So, you know, it's it's funny. So we have, you know, for me, I, I always say the story of how I met my husband is, you know, I, I ended up writing this song about it called Beautiful Story and that's kind of like that season for me was like God saying to me, I'm going to write your beautiful story, which he absolutely did. But I got to this season of like we'd started – you know, being like, okay, yeah, let's have kids. We've always wanted kids. And um, I remember God saying to me, I'm going to take your beautiful story to a miracle wow. story. And that that should be encouraging, <laughs> except that I went, oh, no, <laughs> why do I need a miracle? Yep. Um, and I, I, you know, I'd kind of talked a little bit about this, but um, we had found out that I had actually these really big tumors like in my uterus that were preventing me from getting pregnant. And so I, you know, I had contended for healing and believed God for healing um, all the way up until I, ha- I needed surgery. And in my heart, I thought, oh, yeah, I can have keyhole surgery, so I'll just be like a little mark. But actually, I ended up needing a C-section uh, where they do like open abdominal surgery to take these things out. And, you know, it's incredibly – I mean, like the picture of that, of going in for a C-section and coming out empty-handed, that could leave you feeling incredibly disappointed if you didn't have a promise from God. So even in that surgery, they had taken out – They'd taken out these tumors and they'd also taken one of my ovaries, which as someone who was like 37 at the time, that's a little bit scary in the natural in, ex, unless you go back to the promise that God's given you, um, which was that he's going to give us a miracle story. Um, and so, you know, we had walked out, you know, a couple of years of just believing God and saying like, no, we're so convinced that God's going to do this for us, even though in the natural it really wasn't happening. And, you know, I really sympathize and I now I fully understand people believing for kids and every month having to feel that disappointment. But I would say don't let the disappointment become bigger than the promise that God has given you. And even in those moments, you have to start declaring and thanking God for the promise. And, you know, my, my track record of gathering evidence didn't stop with, you know, believing from my husband and gathering evidence there, even though God wanted to do it a new way. He doesn't often, he'll repeat himself, but he just does everything in a fresh way. So, you know, it didn't look exactly the same, but I still gathered evidence. And, you know, one of the things that we did was um, we bought a crib, you know, three years before we had a baby, uh, which, you know, people would be like, that's kind of weird. And I'm like, is it though? Because if you're fully convinced that God is going to do this for you and you're fully convinced that, 
which that's what faith is. It's being fully convinced of the nature of God. If you're fully convinced, then you will prepare as though it's going to happen, you know? So, you know, we got to like a year and a half in and they did a scan and they found those tumors again and I had to go in and have surgery again, even though I was believing for healing. And I think sometimes like, you know, there's a, there's a balance of just being like really willing and saying, God, I'm expecting this and I'm believing that you can heal this and I'm believing and I know your nature. I know that you're a miracle working God. But even if it doesn't happen the way that I think, I'm so willing. And we, we kind of got to, um, we kind of got to like six months after that, th- that second surgery in September last year. And, you know, they had referred us to fertility specialists, even though I'd refused to believe that I have a fertility problem because I'm like, no, no, no. God said be fruitful and multiply, so therefore I'm fruitful. Um, so, but, you know, I want to stay willing. So we went to this fertility specialist and they essentially said to us, like, you're pretty much out of options. Like, it's not going to happen for you. And, you know, you have a chance in every moment to partner with what your reality is or you have a chance to partner with what God has said. And it's why I keep saying it is so important to get a promise from God. So my promise from God was, I'm going to give you a miracle story. So like, I have to go back to that in that moment and say, I understand what you're medically saying. I understand like that the reality that you are seeing is this, but I have this promise from God that supersedes everything that you're saying. And I choose to partner with that. So I had said to the fertility specialist, respectfully, I'm not out of options and I will call you when I'm pregnant. Wow. Thank you for your <laughs> So I remember walking out of that appointment and like two or three weeks later calling them back and saying, I just wanted to let you know that I'm pregnant. Oh, my gosh. Which is like such a fun thing to do, right, because <laughs> they, actually, they actually were very excited and super stoked for us, you know, so wow. that, was, that was really great. Um, oh, my gosh. I do want to say this one little thing. Because I think sometimes we can contend for a miracle, contend for a breakthrough, contend for a promise, and we think that it happens and then it's just all roses from there. Let me, let me just say this one thing. Like I live by the principle that God can, that he will, and that he wants to, um, which the, the wants to part lots of people don't believe, but he actually does want to. He actually, he's a dad. He really cares. He wants to do good things in your life and he wants to like give you breakthrough he wants to give you like miracles that you get to walk out the beginning of a miracle is not where it all ends you actually still have to walk it out in faith after that because even after we got pregnant you know you have to still believe that like if god did this then god will sustain it because you would know even with carrying two girls sadie like you know there's so much in pregnancy that's unknown And I feel like it's such a beautiful picture of how God does a work in your life is like he he begins something with a seed and then you have to walk it out and grow it and like trust that like he he's in the mix no matter what the report is. You know, we have gotten a few reports in this pregnancy that we've just had to say, you know what, like that might be the way that it looks, but God is God is bigger than that and we're good. Like and what we have found is like that, you know, she even in the womb has to fight all the odds you know, and all the way until you hold it in your hands, you just have to just say, you know, God has given me this promise and I'm just going to keep speaking and declaring that over it from seed to fruition, you know? it's good. So It's good. I'm glad you said that. That's so true because, um, you know, uh, even whenever God said to you that you were going to have a miracle story, you knew immediately what that what that was going to cost in the sense of, oh gosh, like, can it not just be a good story? I mean, a miracle story. (laughs) Yes, because, and and I understand that because whenever we walked through Honey's uh, birth, it was really hard. And we had a a scary situation that required a miracle to happen. And um, I learned a lot about miracles in that moment and in the months to follow, because I realized that you know, whenever you hear a miracle story, if you haven't necessarily experienced that to to you know 
I mean, everything's a miracle. Life's a miracle. But you know what I mean? Like those moments where it's like, I really need a miracle from God. You don't realize that to get a miracle from God or to need a miracle from God requires a moment of desperation. It requires a moment of like, if you do not show up, if this does not happen, then this is going to be really hard. This is going to be really bad. This could be really tragic, you know? And not that he won't sustain you through that and he won't comfort you through that. And that's a whole nother thing because we are going to go through disappointments in life and we are going to go through hard things where the results don't come, you know, like you thought they would or the outcome isn't what you wanted or hoped for or prayed for. But God's still good in that. But whenever you do go through that where you have this moment of desperation, then God shows up and there's this miracle. There is a process of walking that out with the Lord. And I always think about the woman who bled for 12 years and she got healed. And then Jesus said, like, daughter, your faith has healed you. Go in peace. And I think about like what he was saying to her, because it would be really hard to leave that moment and actually go in peace when for 12 years of your life, the reality has been like you've been bleeding and now all of a sudden you're healed. And so like, what does that even look like? How do you come back into the community? How does she, how does she go from what she was to who she is and all this stuff? And I just think about the process that she probably walk through after that. But now she knows the father. Now she's known as daughter. So she's stepping into this process with a new identity, with new hope, with uh, a new truth. And so I, I always think about that. And I love that you said that because there is a process after it. There is a, there is a still, it requires so much faith in God, even after the miracle comes so much, um, closeness and togetherness with the Lord so that you can feel that comfort in the midst of all those times. And so I love that you spoke to that. Um, I can't believe we're already at an hour because I could talk to you all day and pick your brain (laughs) and hear your thoughts. I've learned so much. And I knew as I was praying for you this morning, I was like, I'm praying for everyone that's going to listen, but I'm like, I know I'm going to be so strengthened by this podcast. (laughs) And uh, I'm so thankful that you said yes, just being nine months pregnant. And I know it would be easy to just go lay in the bed, but thank you for just coming on here and sharing your story because it strengthened my faith so much. It's made me want to go sit with the Lord and be like, God, what am I, what's a promise right now? What am I believing for? What am I asking for? What am I, what am I, you know, what are we talking about right now? All the things. And so I'm excited to take what I've learned from this and bring it into my life. And thank you for just uh, believing God the way you do and sharing it with the world. You're a huge inspiration and I'm thankful for all the songs you've written, all that you've done. You're, you're awesome. Oh, I thank you so much for having me, Sadie. You're the best. Yes, this is so I good. Just can't wait to see baby number two. Let's I go. I know, and our girls will have to definitely meet one day, be little besties. I, I can't wait. Well, I love I love your daughter's Thank name. I'm you. like, come on, and Haven's such a beautiful name. I love it too. And y'all haven't announced y'all's name yet, right? I can tell you because it's okay, going to come out you, after you the told me, thing. but I didn't know if you wanted to say it on here because I love it so much. I think it's so cool. Do you yeah. want to share it? Sure. We're uh, we're going to call um, our baby girl Booth May. So cute. Um, because uh, so I'd said that I got saved in the Salvation Army and William Booth started the Salvation Army and was just a ninja of a human. The Booth family, Evangeline, awesome. his daughter, Catherine, his wife, just bunch of ninjas but he has this <laughs> one amazing quote that he that he says that I love and it's he says I'm not waiting on a move of God I am a move of God Come so on. that's kind of been the prayer over our little girl is that she would be kind of a force to be reckoned with Come so yeah, on. Booth, Booth after William Booth and May because she'll be born in May I love it so much I love that so, name and I can't wait to meet her and I think it's so cool when you have just that meaning attached to their name and you speak it over them I mean when we named honey honey part of it was that she would be sweet and she would be strong because those are that's what honey is it's sweet and it's strong oh, honey's unstoppable yes and every night when i put her to bed i always say honey james you are sweet and you are strong and like just Come speaking on. that over her life it's just so cool and i can't wait to do that for haven and you'll do that for booth and it's special so i can't wait to meet booth and i'm just so excited for you and all the things it's an exciting exciting time so fun thanks awesome. so much for having me on today yes